All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Happy Sunday. It's Sunday. The end of the weekend. But I'm here to make that end of the weekend super fun, right? Anyways, hi, I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where I hope to inspire you to do whatever you, it is that you want to do on this lovely Sunday. However it is you want to do it, just get it done. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, let's see. I gotta scroll down here. And let's see who is in the chat. Wow, you guys have been talking for a while. We got Mary, uh, Camille, Candy, Becky, uh, Audrey, Michelle, Cynthia, Delia, Mary, Candy, Ronnie, Melissa, Jojo, Linda, um, Renee, Gerilyn, uh, Marilyn, uh, Donna, Paula, Karen, Glenda, Baze, Patricia, and so many, so many more. Welcome and hello. I do not have my microphone on today because it is not charged. I forgot to charge it. So hopefully you can hear me loud and clear just like this. And if Scott asks a question, you'll be able to hear him because it's, the microphone's not way over here on me because I forgot to charge it. So today I am working on the tranquility quilt that I'm doing for my friend. So that's the tranquility pattern. Get it right up close. There you go. So I'm working on that. Whoa, and I'm sliding around. So I'm ready to start putting around border the center, I'm, I'm ready to start finishing the centerpiece. So I got the outer trim made, the center I've showed you that I finished. I, I showed you on a mail opening or last Sunday. I don't remember when I showed you, but I showed you. So now I need to attach this zigzaggy thing and these arrows and the four corner blocks. And then I'm going to get started on, as soon as that's all done, on the stars that go around this border piece. And then start getting the border pieces together so that I can cut the border and put it on. And then this quilt will be done. So not much farther to go. But now I need my, what they are calling the center assembly in this pattern. I need to uh, assemble the center as piece. <laughs> so... That's what I have right here in front of me is the centerpiece, and I'll show you all the pieces. I need that one over there, though, so that I can see the colors. And this could go right there, because technically I'm on, since this was a block of the month, I'm on what they were calling block nine. So, all right, so here is the super center right here. So I got to add to this now. So I have made that section. Then I have four blocks. So here's one block, two blocks, three blocks, and one block was already made. So there's the one block that was already made. That was the only part, this whole thing that was already made because it was, you know, donated to me. And now I have these sections made. What colors are you going to work with on this quilt? The colors that came with it are the colors I'm working with. So I think they went off the pattern. The front of the pattern are the colors that are in this quilt. So they're spring-like colors. So there's that, those pieces, and then the corner pieces that go to that, as well as there's four of these total sections. I'm just going to pull one off the pile for now. So there's four of these sections as well. So now I just need to attach everything onto the center piece right here. 
according to the directions. So it looks like I need to attach sides first. So it looks like this piece right here is going to go down this side and another one will go down the other side. And it looks like fabric, I right, look at this chart, fabric four is the outer side. So I know that that's the part that goes away from the center. So now I just need to sew one on each side and then do the top and bottom. I'm just going to line it up and sew it on. And I'm not pinning, I'm just cut, attaching it. I, I'm pretty lazy with the pinning this whole entire time, as in I haven't done it. Because <laughs> I, I don't ever feel the need to. So even though I have pins right here in the throat of my machine, I just sew a little bit down, match it up, and just sew it on. Can you plug in the iron so that it's ready? Yeah. Oh, am I out of bobbin already? I am out of bobbin already. And if my machine sounds nice and yummy, <laughs> that's because I cleaned it today. I spent time earlier cleaning my machine when I got home from church. So it's like a brand spanking new machine again. It's even quiet. Do you know who still sells this kit? She the um, you can find the pattern to this in the description of two So Sundays Ago's videos. Yeah, but she, can find, she found the pattern. She can't find the kit. Oh, I don't think anyone sells the kit. This pattern is from 2016, right? 2017. So the pattern's from 2017. I'm pretty sure they kit this out in 2017. So I doubt you can find the kit. But if you do get the pattern, you can just choose what fabrics you want to go wear. Because I don't think that these, these might be available, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a hard find. Because I don't even know the line. I don't remember anything that was on any of the salvages. I'll, I'll know when I get to the border fabrics because there's big chunks in there. So I'll know what the fabric line is when I get that far. Rehold this again. Everything is exactly made to the right size. If you have like the perfect quarter inch seam. And making sure all my seams are staying down. And there we go, breaking thread. Even though I cleaned the machine, it's still not liking any thread. So, <laughs> still being picky on the thread thing. I don't know why, but that's okay. I'll deal with it. It probably just doesn't want me to sew fast with any thread. <laughs> Hi, Mom. All right, I'm going to press this back real quick and then grab the next section. You don't want me to see? No, I got it because I'm oh, doing it a certain way. Oh, it's a big. I see what you're doing. I see. I'm good. So I'm behind the camera. You can still hear me. You could, you could make a, a explanation thing that the, your mom thinks it's small. Could you do that? I could. Be Man, Thumper's not in here. I could have him on the camera now. Yeah, Thumper is laying down for anybody that wants to see him. We're not waking him. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he gets up and comes in here because he realizes that we're doing things that he wants to be a part of. Because that's how it seems to work with that cat. <laughs> All right, so that side is on, okay? So now I need another one, and it's gonna go on this side. 
So I'm going to go right sides together, turn the whole thing around. line it up and start sewing. What's the name of the number one block? The number one block? I don't know if they're named actually. Let's see. Block one, double star block. Center block is called the center block, says Tranquility. <laughs> the block three, which is part of those four blocks, is an eight-point star block. All the little blocks in here are friendship stars. Then the block number five, which is one of the four blocks that go around the four sides, that is the sawtooth block. All of those long pieces that I showed you with the flying geese, those are called the trailing geese block. Then the fourth star that's going to be around the border thing, which would be block seven, according to the pattern, is called burst star block. And then the blocks that are in the center of between the two flying geese units are pinwheel star blocks. And then the border I'm adding now is called the ribbon border. sure that everything is nice and aligned even though I know it is because it's all made to the right size making sure all of my seams stay down and then I back stitch let me press this one now And I do use lots of seam when I do this stuff. I like a seam iron. Your other iron is easily reachable. Do you want that one in here now? No. Instead of this? I'm good. I can easily switch it out. All right. Now that the two sides are on, now I need to connect these outer pieces. So one goes here oops nope 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 it goes here let's flip it around and make sure it's correct i can't keep messing things up all right so that one's going to go on this side and this one goes on this side you're not messing anything up you're doing great oh i cut a wrong piece last night and um i'm not saying where it is let's just say that <laughs> Ask them if they were all on the Zoom with you. They weren't. Oh. Not all of them, no. Oh. It's only Becca's VIP. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right. So I'm going to attach these two real quick, and then mm -hmm. I'll attach those two on that side. Seems should mess because they're pressed opposites, as the direction said. This one, so this one on. Kind of got a lot going on right here on my desk, but hey, you never, you know, gotta do what I gotta do. Now we're gonna flip this around just like this, and I'm gonna match up these and chain piece these through. one and do the same thing. It goes just like that. A lot of people ask how is it that I keep things in order 
when I chain piece. I don't know how I do, I just do. I, Even though I have like a horrible memory and I forget everything five seconds later, I still see where it is, what goes next and how it's going. I don't forget as much in the quilting world as I do in real life. <laughs> and Scotty can attest to that. <laughs> All right. You do a good job. I'm just going to throw that out of the way. I'm not even going to press it. I'm just going to line it up where it goes, right sides together. It should be exactly the same size as you can see, just like that. And let's sew it on. And then we'll do the other side. And then this quilt will grow pretty quickly, like. You don't read patterns too well either. That you like I don't. Your, I don't read patterns go. too well either. I usually make up my own stuff. Makes it easier for me. I'm actually like some of you. I'm a verbal visual person. So the verbal directions and the visual, like the that I do in my videos, I do that on purpose because that's the way I would like to see it. So I do it that way. It's very, very, very rare that I actually write my patterns. I have on a few back in the day, but let's just say they're long-winded patterns. <laughs> the ones that I have written. Will you ever make it again? This? Yeah, I can make it again. I would, I, if I was to make it for myself, this is for a friend, but if I was to make it for myself, I would 100% make it in all purples. Why? Because it would be for me and I love purple. <laughs> But I have the pattern. I all I have to do is trade out the colors, you know, on the chart. Which is what you would do if you bought the pattern right now anyway. You would have to trade the colors out unless the pattern comes written where you put a light, a light, a light, a medium to light, a medium, a medium, a medium, a medium, a dark, darker, darkest, you know, that kind of thing. But the person that I'm making it for, she loves this. So this is what she chose. That's what matters. And that's what counts. I like it when my friends know what they want and quickly like. <laughs> All right, there's one on there. I'm not going to press it yet. I'm just going to attach the other one real quick. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing it correct, and I am. Nesting the seams along the way, the ones that get nested. Does the pattern specify a level of quilter? Um... No, but I say a beginner can do this because they have a figure and the whole in the, the figure page of what you're making, you're making the same blocks over and over again. So you're making the same kind of um, flying geese units. You're making the same kind of half square triangles. You're making the same kind of whatever, and they're all the same numbers. So that's actually a good thing. The only thing that was confusing to me is because the Pattern colors are changed on the pattern. They have a black and white version, which is completely nothing like the color version. So I went through and numbered the pattern instead. So I went through it anywhere that there was number five, I put number five. I went through and marked it all and made it easier for me. Because I definitely struggled with 
black and white photo when I do make patterns. Anywhere that I need to nest the seam, I'm making sure to nest that seam. You can tell which ones line up along the way. And if you pin it, then it's probably even easier. I don't pin anything, but if I did, I would pin it where all these nested seams are. That's a good idea. Okay, I'm going to press this and then move on to the next outer border. So I'm behind the camera again. Wow, this grew by like so many inches already. <laughs> pretty quickly growing pattern. Once you get all the pieces and parts together, it goes pretty quick. What's the name of the pattern? Tranquility. They have it at QBPN. Just go in their search bar and type in Tranquility and you'll see it right there. So I'm gonna put the link in. It's Scott the put a link in. down in there for you. And the pattern looks like this. It's called Tranquility on that website. Oops, lay it this way. All right, so here's this part so far. Looks like by looking in the camera that I have done everything correctly. Now for the next part. I'm pretty sure there's going to be it's all going to be the same, so it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to put a, make sure a light square was right here. So I'm going by the chart, and I'm also looking at the centerpiece. That's my go-to right here on the centerpiece. There's like a little uh, square right here, and that square is showing me that it's this lighter fabric, which was fabric number two, I think. Yep, fabric number two. And making sure that it's always landing in that same spot so that it, I don't know, that way it looks just like the pattern. And now I'm going to add one of these to each side, and I really don't think it matters which way it goes, honestly. Because it's the same both directions. Okay. So one of these is going to go on this side, and one is going to go on the other. And you can see, look at that, exactly the same size all over again. So you can see how quickly you can build a quilt with this method that they have you doing here. Just oh, they already checked it. out QBP and they said it's sold out of the pattern. Oh yeah, because I posted it in the original video, so that's probably why it's sold out now, guys. You can try um, Etsy or uh, other websites. I kind of figured it would sell out quick. It's a beautiful pattern, beautiful pattern. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, so 
Won. The quilt that's hanging behind me is my winner quilt. I won second place on that in the Sewing Machines Plus Virtual Quilt Fest. Let's just end together, making sure all these jeans are where they need to be. Go ahead and just rotate it and add another one. Seems to be awesome. This pattern with the page. It's on. Wing and a Prayer Designs Timeless Treasures. Here, give me the picture. It's made by Wing and a Prayer Design. I can answer mm -hmm. it in the future. It's getting heavy. Here it is. At the bottom, it says Wing and a Prayer 2017. Also says it up there. Do, do, do. How big is it when it's finished? It's 106. I guess I need a different paper. <laughs> Hold on. Just give me the papers. You keep working. I'll figure it out. It is 106 mm -hmm. by 106. It's 106 inch square. Mm -hmm. They will ask for more beans. It's a nice big quilt. Which is considered king size. All right, I'm going to press these and then we're going to attach the squares, the square, blah, 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 the star squares all on those other long pieces. How big a quilt's fit on your long arm? I can fit up to 130 inches comfortably ish, but I choose not to go over 120 inches in width. Because that way I have room to move my machine to the side and change the bobbin and so on and so forth. But yeah, I have like 132 inch cloth leaders or something like that. I have a 12 foot frame, so. needs more water. Gotcha. All right. So 
two sides are on. You can see right there. So now I need to add the top and bottom. So I need these two pieces like this. And we're going to go according to the pattern. So one block goes right here on this side. And then I'm just going to stand and sew this on. Because the other block's going to go on the other side. And I want to make sure that the correct sides go where I'm trying to line everything up. When you're doing different colors, do you need to change the thread for every dark color fabric so it will not show up badly? Um, no, I do not change the thread color for different colors of fabric. If I have something that's white and black, I will most likely use black thread. But if I have something that's uh, white and gray, I'll probably just use white thread. I never bother with a bunch of different thread changes. I think that's just overkill. Honestly, that's my personal opinion. So that's one, and then this one goes on this side. She's doing quilt as you go blocks. Um, well, if you're doing quilt as you go and you're quilting them all different, then quilt them all different colors. All right, so this needs to be pressed, but for now, I'm just going to lay it out of the way. And we're going to do the same here. So this would be, if this was upside down, this one goes on this side. Nope. Yep. It's going to go on this side because it's going to go over there. And the other one will go on the other side. Okay. So one of these days I'm going to find a single thread that does not break. Bless you. Bless you. What is in this room? That's like the eighteenth time. I'm over here. I'm not even near it. No, it circulates. Hi. goes on this side. I get for standing. I, you know, veered in. All right, I'm going to press these. It should go quick because I'm pressing it to the solid piece. There's one. I can help by straightening it out. There you go.
Arrow came out with polyester piecing thread. Maybe you should try it. Yeah. All right, here we go. That was for the bottom. This one was for the top. Let's find that square again. Here it is, so that I know that this is my top. This will go right into this. Just so gonna line that up. Is it hard to stand and sew? No. Well, here it is because my desk is for short people like me when I sit. It's not meant for me to stand at. But I do stand at it on occasion. All right, so now I'm just going to... Do you wear your new nightgown? Yes, I've been wearing my new nightgown. It got washed this morning when Scott did the laundry. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, make sure this first nested seam is held nice and tightly as if it was a pin. Hold seams down as I go. Adjust and fiddle with the quilt as much as you need to <laughs> when you're attaching stuff like this. What thread are you using? I'm using an off brand that we get online. Scott buys whatever thread he can from wherever he can. Just a messy cotton. That's all it is. And I've tried the Aurifil. I've tried the other one. I just keep having thread breaks and I think it's just over the years this machine has gotten picky. Very picky. I can run glide through it. I don't have a problem with the glide thread, <laughs> which is my long arm thread. I only bind with it if the binding thread needs to match the quilted part. But other than that, I don't use it for piecing. Hold this seam. Is there a machine you'd recommend for a beginner? Um, for a beginner beginner that has not sewn anything, I would say get a little Walmart cheapy machine to make sure you even like it. To make sure you even like sewing. I wouldn't honestly spend the thousand dollars it costs to buy one of these in the beginning. And unless I absolutely know. So I'd go to Walmart, spend 300 and something dollars on a machine. And then when I absolutely know that that's what I love doing, then I'll go and get the awesome one. For a beginner, this is perfect. The Juki TL2010Q. This is an amazing machine and it's straight stitched only. So you don't got to worry about any computerized stuff or any of that. You, you can quilt on it and you piece on it. And that's all you need for quilting is quilting and piecing. Unless you plan to do applique, but even then you can do straight stitch applique. You don't have to have decorative stitches for applique. I was actually just saying that last night to someone else. <laughs> But yeah, this, this machine has gone through a lot. And I had struggles with it last night and got very mad <laughs> at this machine. Because it decided to stop working. While I was sewing, it just stopped. It, the lights were on. Everything was on. I pressed the pedal. Nothing was happening. It did it again. So I shut everything off, turned it back on, blah, blah, blah. It wouldn't do it. Turned it off, turned it back on. Unplugged things, plugged it back in. And then it would sew again for about two minutes. And then, bam, it did it again. It shut off. So today, the goal was, because it wasn't doing it again this morning, when I came back in here, I tested again. And yeah, it wasn't working. I pressed the foot paddle. I tried the needle up and down button. Nothing was working. The light was the only thing that came on. So I cleaned my machine this morning. And it actually wasn't my machine that was the problem. My machine had nothing wrong. All the electrical wires were plugged in perfectly. Wow, it looks beautiful in there. Nice and clean. But 
It was actually the power outlet. What is it called again? A surge protector. Yeah. The surge protector protector was a brand new one too, and it broke. It would turn things on, but it wouldn't let it run the power it needs to run the machine. Perfect quarter inch or a scant quarter inch? I use a perfect quarter inch and I have this little doohickey tool that I just recently got and from one of my open gate quilt boxes. It's a seam thing. You put your needle in the hole of the seam allowance that you need and then you line your uh, magnetic seam guide up to it. Bam! Perfect quarter inch seam. <laughs> it was probably probably perfect before I got that little tool because I lined my you know thing up right away anyway. Line my um oh my goodness magnetic seam guide up but yeah all right i gotta check this now because i think it could be your timing uh no that looked good too everything looked good it just likes to break thread it only started doing it just recently all right here we go this block of course my chart my chart can i have the color Page, please. Thank you. My color chart showing that one. The square around it. Okay, so that one goes there. So this one goes down on this side. All right. It's already lap size as it is. I have lots of borders to add. And pieces and parts and blah, 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 blah. But it's getting done. All right. This first seam up right here. How many different fabrics are used in this quilt? Uh, 15 different fabrics. nesting seams as I go so that everything stays lined up where it's supposed to sit. One seam right here. Those two right there. Oh, those two right there. I knew I saw it sooner. Is the fabric fat quarter? No, it was a kit, so it's a ton of different fabrics. There's a list. I could tell you right here. Yardage needed. Fabric one, five eighths. Fabric two, one and one fourth. Fabric three, one yard. Fabric four, two thirds yard. Fabric five, two and one fourth yards. Fabric six, seven eighths. Fabric seven, five eighths. Fabric eight, a half. Fabric nine, three eighths. Fabric ten, one yard. Eleven needs one and one fourth. Twelve, one and one fourth. Thirteen, three and three eighths. Fabric fourteen, one and a half. And fabric fifteen, seven eighths of a yard. It tells you on the back of the pattern. And um, if you match your own fabrics to it, you just need 15 different fabrics. And a lot of it. <laughs> Hello.
have any leftovers? Uh, there's a tiny bit of leftovers, yes. I had to cut into yesterday because I made a boo-boo, which happens. And I'll admit. <laughs> I'm not going to show you where. <laughs> I fixed it as best as I possibly could. Alright, now to press it and then I can get on to the next set of borders. Which make this bigger and bigger each time. It's already bigger than the ironing board. And the ironing board is like 64 inches or 65 inches, something like that. I just measured it the other week, though. <laughs> I do suggest for patterns that are big like this to have a big ironing board. You know, if you can have your husband's or son's or grandson's make you a giant ironing board like I have, it really helps with big, huge patterns like this. Because you're pressing the borders around and around. So it's nice to have the big space. So, so far this is like 68-ish or so inches. It's bigger than my arm span. Holy cow, do you want me to hold that end of it? Nope. That's awesome. So there it is so far. Come up a little. So it's definitely bigger than me <laughs> so far. So at this moment, I'm just going to fold it out of the way and pull out the next section and get started on that. All right, so move that out of the way. And we're gonna grab um, oh, it's down there. That's done. So now we're on section 10. We need our chart in front of us. We need to open and press the fabrics. Okay, and we're going to be making these stars in a specific order. Are you going to finish it tonight? Um, I don't think it'll get finished tonight because there's a lot of cutting and sewing for the next set of pieces. So I'll probably get started on this, but I doubt it'll get finished. Let me press these real quick. Can I? Are you entering this in the show first or is it getting straight sent straight off when it is done? Uh... <laughs> She told me to enter it into a show, 
and keep it for shows and keep it for shows and then send it to her. But I don't know. I kind of, you know, just want to get it to her. And if she wants to enter it into the shows for me, <laughs> I don't know if she knows how, but whatever, she might. And then she could do it because honestly, I have a lot of show quilts that I need to get finished. And that would be too many show quilts to keep track of because I do have a lot of them. <laughs> How many borders does it have? It has a lot of borders. In total, where did my paper go again? Oh, it's right here. It has what I just added onto that center. That would be plus the center because that was a border around the first part. So that's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total borders. But in actual borders with the stars in it there's one two three four five six seven borders and they're called borders in the pattern so that's a lot all right let's get this flat and get the cut and hopefully i don't make a wrong cut because i'm distracted <laughs> it goes pretty quick though once you get the hang of the it same blocks over and over again, it actually goes really fast. <clears throat> and remember this for me was a block of the month type thing. If you get the actual pattern, it's not considered a block of the month. You can do it one section at a time every month, or you can just do it all at once. One more fabric to press. And before you ask, no, I did not starch any of this. I've starched the finished blocks and that's about it. And they matched right up with the ones that weren't starched. All right, we're gonna put this in order. So fabric two is first, go to my chart. Hey, I could have ironed that. Two is this one. Is that what you just ironed? Yeah. Why didn't you let me iron that? Oh, because I'm on it. I know you're on Fabric it. three is this one. I'm putting them in order. Because I'm going to cut them in order. Fabric four is this one. Five is definitely this one because I've been working with this one a lot. Six, five, five, and then it goes to ten. This one's ten. Ten is this one. And then twelve is this one. And fourteen is that one. We're going to put all this in order and start with one. All right, what do I need to cut from it? 24, oh, yo, yo, yo. and then I got to cut them in half? Is that what I'm doing? Yep, okay. All right, cut 24 of a number. <laughs> Can't give you the measurements, it's not my pattern. I know, it makes no sense, but. Line this up. Okay. The starching change the size of the material. It will. It can. Depends on the starch you use and how much starch you use. I did not know it Depends that. on the brand and the size. It, they call it sizing for a reason. To shrivel it up. Make it tighter. As soon as you wash it, it goes right back to normal again, though. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, where are we at? 24 of those. 3 and 4. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to cut one. And they, this kit came with like almost exact amounts. I mean, these are the strings that are coming off of it. They gave me like a little tiny bit to work with. 
And then I'm going to turn it, open it, and subcut it. That's me straight. Line it up on a line. All right. And I got the lid. them as I go so that I don't forget. All right, so I'm going to again cut twenty-four of those squares again. Look around. Make sure the size one more time before I start cutting. of that. And then the next one is two strips of a smaller number. This pattern does have eighths in it, so if you don't know what your eighth inch line is, that's the first line after a number. And then I have strips like this that I've been cutting down and putting in a string pile of excess stuff. On there. All right, so those are the smaller ones. Let's do the bigger ones first. So I need 24, but these I'm leaving whole. One. Oops, almost at the other number. Five, six, seven, eight. Twelve. Sixteen. Twenty. And twenty-four. All right, so these I'm leaving whole. Two, and then these ones also get left whole. I'm going to stack them up and cut the other number. Which is an eighth of an inch number. Cut that one out. Yep, I did. <laughs> Sometimes I cut and then I go, wait, did I really do that? Happens often. All right. So there's 24 of these. It's going to go that way. So that's done. Now I'm going to cut fabric four, which is this one. What does it want me to cut? All right, here we go. Folding it right here, 
I'll go ahead and cut the selvage off now. Make a straight line. And another eighth of an inch number. Yep. Oh no. Three eighths. Hold on. Now I gotta do this. One, two, three, and three eighths. Oi, oi, oi. One, two, three eighths. I haven't had three eighths yet of all the cuts that I've done, that none of them have been a three eighths. So that's a first. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a nice straight string off of that. down my pile. And I'm going to subcut the however many three eighths. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, all that's lined up. One, two, three. And one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Four, six, seven, eight. See, so I like get these little like one inch pieces. <laughs> I'm saving them though. All right, that's all cut up. Put that there, mark it off. I'm gonna do this. Oh, no, another. All right, I hate that they keep changing these numbers. You just wanna cut them all the same size so that your brain doesn't get all fried. But it doesn't call for that. Straight edge here, straight edge there. What was the number again? Two, three, eight. Nope. Nope. It's a smaller number. Oh, I don't know. One. Are you asking me? Was that no, supposed to I'm remember? Talking to myself. Oh. Two. Turn it. Turn it. Stack them up for better cutting. And yes, I cut this fast all the time, if you're curious. <laughs> Some people ask that. You cut so fast. Yes, I do. One more. Yes, one lady said she wouldn't be able to cut until she lied at the same time. Yep. It's been it's been very rare, but I have made um, wrong cuts during live streams. I try to pay attention to what I'm doing, but, you know, you know, sometimes it happens where I mess up. Twelve of that same number from this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to the cutting thing. It goes pretty quick. I've been doing this a lot and I've made a lot of quilts. Hundreds of them. Oh, did that move too much? No, it didn't. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Woo! I hate when the ruler moves right at the end of that cut because I wasn't holding it properly. Can I do this again? That one. Okay. Quarter and quarter. Twelve of those. All right. Next fabric twelve. I have them all stacked in front of me in order of their color. All right, what am I doing with 12? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and straighten this out. I'm going to line it up neatly on a line because the cut is bigger than my ruler, so I have to use the cutting mat. Mm -hmm. 
And is this three quarters of an inch? I don't know. Let's see. Again, I'm literally saving the small scraps because <laughs> I'm going to string them all together. Is there a local shop so kits and stuff like this? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They also do block and mops. Oh. I'm pretty sure of it. All right, so I need three of one size. I'm going to get two and then a third, and then I got a sub cut. Line up a line. It's bigger than my ruler. One, two. Open it up. Cut my third. Oops. No. My, I guess we'll line it up on a solid line again. So there's three of those. And then I need 24. Are you going to see if you have enough scraps left to make a pillow to go with this? Uh, we'll see what I have left. Line. Oops. No, that's not because that didn't iron out very well. Okay, hold on. Let's fix that. There we go. Turn it, subcut it. All right. And then subcut. Let's see how many I get from this amount first. And I might not have to do that last strip. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, sixteen, twenty, and I do have to cut into that last and final strip. One time. Do you all map in it out? I know, right? I'm like geniusly working like a smarty. Like you, a are smarty, a smarty. <laughs> you are a smarty. You are a smarty. Two and four. You're just smarty pants. All right, so there's all those. So that's all cut up. Let's check them off. And the last one is fabric 14. Am I cutting this too? Oh, those same cuts. Just gonna line this crooked fabric up. And when I say crooked, I really mean that the fold is not equal with the selvage. Oh wow! So that like, is crooked. yeah. If you really wanted to make it equal, you would have to adjust it to where it's hanging over on both sides then fold it, but then I lose too much fabric to ha not have that elbow. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it because I'm cutting the whole elbow out anyway. So I'm just folding it like that, like this, and see, it'll have an elbow in it, but I'm not using the elbow, so it's okay. So I'll go ahead and make my first cut, turn it, line it up on the board because I don't have that number on my ruler. Could always grab a bigger ruler, but I don't feel like it. Just gonna work with what I've been working with. Cut this strip. And then this last one for my scrap pile of strings. I'm literally cutting a three quarter inch strip because I'm going to really make something with it. Cause that gives me a quarter inch. <laughs> of usable, fa seeable fabric <laughs> in whatever I make. <sighs> it's funny. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and subcut now to the same ones, okay. Okay, that goes there. Come over the number that's not on my ruler. Open it up, do it again. Those. So I 
move my piles over. And then we cut 24 of the other number. So crooked. I'm literally lining the fold up now. <laughs> Look at how crooked that is at the fold. Turn it around. <laughs> Crazy. And subcut. I'm going to make a nice straight start cut though, because it's kind of a tiny, tiny bit wonky. Four, eight, whatever that is, sixteen, twenty. And I'm going to cut four more from here. And then I'll be ready to start sewing more. Because I already sewed a little bit today. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. All right. There. All right. Now to follow the directions. Not something I have a strong suit in, but I try. <laughs> All right, we're going to make some square and squares first. Using square and squares. Make 12 of them using directions. Fabric four squares and fabric two triangles. Fabric four Squares four is this. What are these? Those are those three eighths ones, aren't they? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those and fabric two triangles. And it should yield a four and a half inch block. Oh, I have to square to a four and a half inch block. So we're going to make square and square blocks now. Really? These two colors? That's not very bright. Okay. If they say so. So you could like, for square and squares, you could fold them in half like this. Create a little center notch. Fold your square in half. Create a little center notch. And then match those center notches um, so that way they line up better. But I'm just going to eyeball it because I'm literally going to chain piece all of one side. And it says I'm making 12 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to center it on here where I think is center and just sew it. Because I've been chain piecing a lot of this whole entire quilt. And since I have to trim it down anyway, I'm pretty sure that uh, it won't matter if it wasn't completely centered to start off with. Hopefully, uh, I, I saw that um, um, Mississippi had a tornado go through it. So, uh, prayers to all those that are or near or had family in the wreckage. I saw the videos online today. Woo, what? So, that's some damage. So, hopefully, all of you are safe. Huh? Oh. The rest of you that are in those areas because it said other areas were out of power that you know if that's all 
cleared up hopefully by now. And that the storms have pretty much passed. I watch Ryan Hall, which is the weather guy. Um, it's called Ryan Hall, y'all, here on YouTube. And he's the state's weather. And so I find out about weather all over the country. I mainly like to watch for my daughter Alexa and Tennessee's weather. <laughs> and then our weather. Because <laughs> I like to know what kind of temperature she has. There were 13 tornadoes all together and having more now. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, stay safe, those Alabama. of you that are in those areas in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, anywhere that is tornado prone, Missouri, anywhere. I know that uh, Oklahoma and Texas gets tornadoes too, and yeah, be safe, everybody. Oh, I already did that side. So now I gotta go and turn them around and do the other side. I'm just gonna add the other side and now I kind of know where the center is because I'm lining it to the center of the other one. So if I peeled this back, those two diamond points match up. Sometimes it helps just to have the weight of these up here. Because sometimes it feels like it's pulling. You don't want it to pull too much. When the picture is not colored, it, it's really hard to imagine. Oh, it is light, very light. Okay. Just looks weird. Being light on light. Once these are uh, sewn, I have to press them and sew them the other direction. There's somewhere between 100,000 and 400,000 people without power in Ohio because of the storm. Oh, wow. That's scary. One person said 100,000 plus, the other said 400,000. So there's a lot of power out. Storms will do that. All right, so now all these just need to get pressed. And then we need to add the tops and the bottoms. So I shall be behind the camera for two seconds. Uh, actually longer because the iron was not on. I didn't unplug it. No, it turns itself off. Uh, after it's I didn't know minutes. you weren't using it. I would have redid it. Heat it quick. Heat it quickly like. I'm just pressing them back as in you know, when you're making them, I press them towards this lighter one. It probably says to do otherwise, but I'm just pressing them back. Everything so far has lined up nicely that I've done. So I'm not too worried if I accidentally press something the wrong way. I just press it how I know best.
Do some quilt patterns less length by width versus width by length? Uh, not what, that I know of. What's supposed to come first? Uh, most of them do the smaller number first when they put a pattern out there um, and it says on the pattern 60 by 80 the the smaller number usually comes first, which is your width. And then if it's uh, like this pattern says it's 106, it just says 106 square. That means it's 106 by 106. Anytime you see the word square afterwards, it's that's what it means. But most patterns that I've had, bought, made, they all say the smaller number first, the width, and then the length. Okay. Now you can, when you make square and square blocks, you could either um, trim off these with a ruler and a rotary cutter, or you can use scissors. I'm literally just going to use the ruler and rotary cutter. Just like that. Turn it around. I only have 12 to do, so. Just get them off. You don't even have to use the ruler if you trust yourself cutting. Like you can just go snippity snip. Like that but obviously when I'm trying to hurry I don't get it straight so <laughs> I'll just stick with the ruler looks funny when the, the first section is on Come on, there we go. Couple more. There we go. And last one. And then we're going to start adding the other side of our square and a square. And then we'll press them and trim them. And then that section will be done. And I'm trying to stay with section sections. So like I'm going to do this part first and then I'll move on to, you know, the next section and the next section. That way I don't get myself lost or out of order. So now I'm just going to take my piece and put one right sides together and I'm going to just center it over that. There should be a quarter inch about on either side hanging off. So that's how I know it's pretty center. They line up pretty nicely. And I'm just going to chain piece all these through. So I got about a quarter inch on both sides. Line it up and sew it through. This is so much fun. I definitely enjoy making big, pretty quilts and challenging myself because, you know, some things do frustrate me and challenge me. Like other people's patterns. <laughs> For real, let me tell you. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know it was two tabs to do it. Yeah, well, look on my thing. Uh -huh. See my friend? The last oh. of the sewing channel comes on a separate one. Oh, well. It's, well, it's kind of confusing. People are yeah. like, what? What is that? The whole thing ought to be a separate one. Well, it's at least it comes that. in right after each other. Yeah, but the whole thing ought to be on yeah. the second one if it's going to well, do that. Well, I'll take the extra spaces away when I fix it. Well, we can talk about that later, but I'm just saying the whole thing ought to be on the second. 
I'm also making sure that these are right sides together because uh, when I'm pulling from this pile, each one is right side up, right side down, right side up, right side down. So when I'm pulling from it, I have to make sure that the piece is going in the right direction or I'll uh, sew it on the wrong way. <laughs> I don't want too many of those mistakes in here. I'm checking before I before I sew. <laughs> all right, now I'm gonna flip them all around and do the opposite side, and then press them and trim them, and then on to the next step. It's not that hard to follow a pattern, I guess. I do suggest though reading the pattern fully first. I mean, it might not make sense the first time, but when you go to put things together or piece it or whatever, that it might make sense that second time because you pre-read it. I have fuzz just blowing around my nose. You're not sneezing. Yeah, I was. that blade is closed while I do that. So I'm not cutting my fabric. Did you, or are you finding any parts particularly challenging? Um, the only thing I've found challenging is the color chart on here. And once you get used to it, you get used to the colors. And what number they are. But that's about it. That's the only thing I've found challenging. There's some stuff in here that most of you probably haven't done, like um, uh, partial seams, which isn't that hard. Uh, the pattern actually tells you how to do it. <clears throat> I'm thinking that we're going to have to get one of those purifier things in there that sucks all the yuck into it. Yeah. You know? All right, so I'm just going to trim these apart and then press them and trim them down. You can see they overlap each other, so I'm trying to make sure I don't cut the pieces. I'm just cutting the connecting threads on them. All right. All right, I'm going to press these real quick, and then we're going to trim. Did you make your wing quilt behind you on the wall in a video? Um, I made the Jacob's Ladder part in a video. I did not make the border of it in the video. But I'm planning, I'll let you guys in on a secret. I am actually planning to make that in a full size, not tiny pieces quilt. I just have to get all the measurements and everything correct. 
before I make the video. And it won't be a live stream video, it'll be a pre-record video. Because it got lots of attention, so it deserves its own video, but as a regular sized quilt. Do you I gotta use, get the yardage correct and stuff. Do you use 40 or 50 orofil thread? When I use orofil, I use uh, 40, no, 50 weight. I think it's 50 weight, honestly. Do you, you don't use orofil though. When I do, it's right here. The ones that are right here are 50 weight. So I use these little guys that are 50 weight. I deal with the thread breaking just like I do with any other brand. And I think the big spools. Uh, it's hard to read that little thing. I think the big spools are 40 weight and the little spools are 50. Okay. Let me go ahead and trim all these now to the size that my pattern says to trim it to. Ouch, which is Oh, four and a half. Okay. Whale. Whale, whale, whale. Let's see. Where does that land? Where's the half mark? Right there. So it's a quarter inch. Okay. So I'm going to line it up a quarter inch past that and a quarter inch past that. What's your favorite thread? My favorite thread is any thread. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite, honestly. Well, which one works on your machine? It doesn't like Orfil. It doesn't like any of the threads lately. It's okay, the normal one that you get from Walmart. It doesn't like that either. It doesn't have a brand name. The normal thread that you used to use all the time. Oh my gosh. Coats and Clark. I can't think of the names off the top of my head. All right, well, that's kind of skimpy. I don't like what that. What is thicker, the lower number or the higher number in weight? The higher. The higher number is thinner, the lower number is thicker. So 12 weight's really thick and 50 weight's pretty thin? Yeah. Okay. I'm do it right there and right there. Boy. That's so close. Can I have that quilter select ruler behind you, please? Which would be? That, what, the yellow one. They're all yellow. Uh, the one that says QS on it. It's Left, in the middle. Right, up, it's down. in the middle on the right. Next to the blue hanging thing that's a basket. Hanging thing that's in the basket next to the rotary cutters. This one? Yep. That top one. Just the top. No, no, lower. The one that's on top. That's the Oh, you mean one. in front? Yes. Well, top would be the one above it. Okay. You're saying. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to do it this way. Mm. Right there. Right there. All right. I'm going to use a ruler that has half inch markings on it so that way I can line it up better. Still looks close, but it's better than the other ruler. still cutting it close. So a lot of these points are probably going to be missing. <laughs> I can't control that because it's not really that equal. Right there, right there, and right there. I don't have one of those square and a square ruler trimmers. 
I don't need one either because I can just do it this way. And if I lose my points, oh well. As long as it's done. I have almost a quarter inch on those ends. Would oh. 50 weight be okay for hand piecing? Um, I would imagine so. I'm not a hand piecer. Uh, she knows that this one is. Uh, what you gonna call it? A, an extraordinaire on that. I just have been piecing with all. I have this thing here filled with all these threads from Walmart, and I've just been pulling from this and piecing with it. <laughs> They're little cotton things. I don't even know what weight they are. I'm just piecing with them. That's what I've been using on my hand stitching. But there are some hand piecing extraordinaires here in this chat that probably know. Quarter, 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 and quarter. See, this ruler is helping because I can line up all the quarter inch marks around the block. And then it helps me line it up better. Oops, I needed a little bit more on that side. Turn it one more time. One more time. Good. A few more blocks to trim, and then I can move on to the next. also kind of using the lines that are on the ruler. There's some diagonal lines that are the 45s, lining them up with other 45 degree markings here. Two more. keep scratching my nose guys not because of boogers but because of these little tiny dusty fabric and thread pieces floating around driving me crazy yeah right you got a boogie <laughs> but i swear they're like stuck to my little nose hairs and i just want to like stick my finger in my nose and like pull all the threads off my nose hair you it's go blow irritating your nose. it you can go blow your nose no, they it's understand. not a blowing nose problem it's a little dusty things floating around <laughs> just touching my nose problem what if i use my shirt <laughs> there you go there we go that's better all right square to square made next go ahead and Sweep all that off into my garbage. Next is making. It's six forty. How long do you want to keep going? Uh, I don't know what you're starting or where you're getting at. Flying geese units. 
That's up to you. I don't care. I'm I can do a, time it is. a few flying beast units before I get off of here. Okay, make flying geese units. The method found on the general instruction. Figure A. Make three sets of three and twelve. So this is fabric three. Uh, it doesn't say what size. So three has that number or that number. HST FG flying geese. So it's the small one. We're going to make sure that's a small number there. Yep, that's the small number. And then this one is 12, which has 20, 25 and a half, which is this one. So those and those go together. And the B unit is 3 and 14. So half of these and half of these. Okay. Sure, why not? Move my scene guide out of the way and we're going to make some four at a time flying geese. Very simple. Square. Fits on top of square in one corner like this and then you take another square and put it on the bottom corner overlapping the two like that the right sides together and i'm gonna sew there's no line i'm not drawing the line i'm literally using the red line on my thing as my thing so the black line and the black line on the inside of the seam tape line i'm using those lines to sew a quarter inch on either side of my invisibly drawn line and i just hold them i don't pin or nothing so i'm on one side so i'm lining up with the black on the one side when I go around to the other side, I'll do the same thing. So I'm making four, four at a time, four at a time, four at a time flying geese units. Okay. And they've been pretty darn good this whole entire time I have been making this pattern. All of my four at a time flying geese have been made this way without a drawn line. And they have been lining up just like they're supposed to. But if you don't trust it, don't do it. <laughs> and if you need to pin, pin. Because I don't pin either. I don't see the need. I'm just holding my fabrics down and chain piecing them through. And there's charts online if you want to learn how to make the four at a time flying geese. There are uh, there's a chart that you can find if you Google four at a time flying geese unit chart. You will get the chart for the formula of which size big square and which size smaller squares that you need to make whatever size you want as your finished flying geese unit. I do not have that chart on me, so I can't tell you. And then I just flip the whole thing around and sew down the other way, lining it up on that same black line. Snippity-snippity. Trim them in half. So on the drawn line, that's not really there. 
and then we'll be pressing them back and adding the other side. Hence, four at a time flying geese. One more. And then I'll press them and add the other side. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm behind the camera. Ask if anybody any questions. If anybody has any like questions to create conversation, tell Scott in the chat and he will ask me. I'm only going to be on for just a little tiny bit longer, long enough for me to make the rest of these, the flying geese units, and then I'm going to get off. I try not to go on for more than two hours. Sometimes it goes over just a little bit, but we try to keep it under two hours so that I can eat and all sorts of other stuff. Talk to other people. You talk talk to online people. to friends. You know, you everything that I do them. after I get off live stream. You have to read your email. Two people emailed you. All right, so once I create this funky looking piece that looks like a heart, so you can see these lovely heart shapes here. So once the lovely heart shapes are created, then I'm gonna take the next square and I'm gonna lay it on that opposite corner, just like this. And I'm going to sew on both sides of my invisibly drawn line, which is center to center. So corner to corner. So I'm sewing on both sides of the line, which is not there, but you can put it there. This diagonal seam tape, I got to tell you, it's a lifesaver. I don't have to waste all that extra time drawing both, you know, drawing the lines and blah, blah, blah. I'm all about saving time and doing things faster. That is what I am uh, all about. I'm going to your machine film. What? Are you talking about your machine? Oh, I don't know. You're winning. I don't know. You're winning. So, for those that don't know, I'll just... I wasn't going to tell you. Anything. I'll just say it out loud now. Um, the prize that I won for the winning of second place for this quilt... Y'all know that I didn't need another long arm. Not a sit down, not a stand up. I don't need another... Unless it's like super better than the one I currently have. But um, I don't need another one. And... Selling the winning one would have taken some time. So I actually asked them if I can trade my prize. And I'm not the only one that asked the, uh, on the winners that asked if they can trade their prize. So I traded my prize in. I did take quite a loss, um, a big loss yeah. for trading it in. But I traded it in for three machines, which you will be seeing shortly when they do come in the mail. I will be doing unboxings on all three machines. They are all Juki machines. Obviously, I'm a Juki girl. And obviously, one of them you may know because it's something that I've been wanting. So if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know I like to make bags. And you know that I wanted a specific machine to make bags. Okay. <laughs> so 
it should be here sometime this week, and then we'll do an unboxing. And my first impression. All right, now I'm going to turn it around, sew down the opposite side. Making sure that everything stays open, not all tangled up, because <laughs> that happens too when I chain B sometimes. Computerized? Nope, I do not have a computerized long arm. I free motion quilt only. Everything I do is from this computer up here, right here. This is the computer. And this is the guiding. <laughs> I actually use one hand, but you know, you get the picture. Someday in the future, maybe we'll computerize. That way Scott can take, you know, bulk load of people that just want edge to edge. But I will always do custom, always do my own thing the way I like. I find it very fun to move the machine around. It's relaxing to me and it just, it's a feel good thing. So I will never stop doing that. All right. So now all I have to do is trim these all in half and I'll have a bunch of Flying geese units. Come on. No, right there. And then I have to trim them down, obviously. But that I will do later because we're running short on time here. I'm just going to split them all in half now. From corner to corner of the square that I just sewed on. Make sure that it's all sticking out though, because you don't want to accidentally cut off some of your flying geese unit. And I do have a flying geese trimmer and that I went to use it while my friend Eric was here last weekend. And let's just say I don't like using the flying geese trimmer. I'd rather just trim my way. It probably takes longer than using the flying geese trimmer, but I like doing things my way. <laughs> so it'll be a very rare thing when I use the trimmer. How long did it take you to make the winning quilt? In what category did you win? Uh, it was People's Choice. I won People's And it took me, I don't know, three days to make it or something like that. Just off and on sewing of the little tiny pieces. I did two videos of piecing the Jacob's Ladder part. So there's like four hours there of screwing around making that and then the border I did in I don't know one morning Scott I don't know where he went he went somewhere and I was halfway done when he got home and said look what I figured out that's why I named it Tiffany's Epiphany 
because I had an epiphany when I was making it. I was like, oh, hey, this is awesome. This is, this is cool. Makes a whole different look. Next year, I'm really hoping to see a lot more of you enter the Sewing Machines Plus Virtual Quilt Festival. That would be lovely to see all of your guys' quilts there. All right, so I have now a ton of flying geese units. I'm going to separate them into two piles because one is unit A and one is unit B. And I'm going to trim them all down, but not right now, to the size that they are supposed to get trimmed to. All right, and then these should all be unit B, I think. No, that's, yeah. That was 14, so that's actually unit B, and this is unit A. All right, so there that is. This is what I'm making again, the Tranquility Pattern by Jean McDonald for Wing and a Prayer Designs. What's your long arm? My long arm is a King Quilter Elite 2 Special Edition. The only reason why mine is a special edition is because I got a bigger screen instead of the little tiny screen that it comes with, a little, like, I don't know, it's that big I got a bigger screen so that way I can see it visually <laughs> it's like seven inches or whatever so that's why I got the one I got and when we bought it a long time ago it was at ten thousand dollars not at eight thousand whatever it is now it's like eight thousand five hundred so something like that so it was a lot cheaper now and a lot more expensive when they first came out because I bought it when it first came out. I was one of like the first four people to own it. Alrighty guys. So any questions? I don't know. Just talking about fabric. You have Walmart, thrift stores, Marshall Dry Goods. Donna Jordan make this pattern. I've never seen Donna Jordan make this pattern. I'm gonna have to look it up. I've never seen her make it. <clears throat> all righty well if there's no questions or anything i'm gonna go for the night and by the time you see this quilt next the top should be complete hopefully so i'll be able to show you guys that i won't be able to quilt it until my friend chooses a backing fabric i don't know what she wants so as soon as she chooses something and we get it then uh then i'll be able to quilt it but i have long arm jobs to do and stuff like that I did want to share with you guys before I go on my way out that I hung some of my quilts back up on the wall with the dowel unit I was talking about. So as I say goodbye, I'm going to show you guys the quilts that I hung. No, you're not in the way. That I've hung up so far. Let's go around here. So I hung two quilts so far and you can see the dowel unit. So I cut a dowel to size that I wanted, and then we got these clear plastic things on, I don't know, where did you buy them, Scotty? eBay. eBay. I'm going to show you what the plastic things look like. So it's this weird hoopy thing that's bigger. We thought this was supposed to be like a half inch or something yeah, really, small. really small. We wanted it a half an inch because the dowels are half inch dowels, but they came this big. Look at how much bigger than my finger those are. I could fit two fingers in there. Like it's huge. So it's a sticky thing that you don't have to put holes in your walls though. And you can see that it blends with the wall color. So this is how my quilts are now going to be hung throughout my whole house so that we don't have to put a ton of holes in the walls. And all I have to do to get them off is simply slide it out and change it out and then put the new one back up and slide it back up. 
So that is how my quilts are being hung now. So anyways, guys, love you all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.